the 14th of April 1948. Pan American Lucky Constellation Empress of the Skies has come in from Brussels, landed in London's Croydon Aerodrome. The crew change and on board comes Captain Frank Jekyll and his colleagues. While settling into the cockpit, a maintenance engineer arrives and explains that the rheostat or instrument dimmer switch has gone faulty on the previous landing in Brussels. Frank Jekyll proceeds to ask if there is a spare unit in stores at Croydon Aerodrome. The answer is a definitive no and that if a spare is to come from Pan American headquarters in New York, a further 48 hours will lapse. On receiving this news, Captain Frank Jekyll decides to proceed with the next leg of the flight to Shannon Airport in Ireland. The rest is history. Now, Flan, uh, uh, thanks very much uh, for yesterday and uh, for making me so Welcome outside at the, the Men's Shed and Ennis. You have a fantastic organisation out there. Thank you, Peter. The, the boys were delighted with their presentation. <laughs> as, long as, <laughs> as long as they weren't <laughs> bored stiff and just hiding it. <laughs> no, Which... no, they really enjoyed it. No, they actually did. My father did all the details yeah. from that. Excellent the stuff. Father, you know? Yeah, and uh, Timothy was just unbelievable with his recollections. Um, just to get back uh, for a moment, uh, if we could, um, Flan, to talk about uh, what you've been doing outside in Ennis for the last couple of years with the Pan American um, uh, Memorial and uh, Gravesite. Can you tell us a little bit about that and the people you've come in touch with? Sure. Um, I suppose quite simply, the airport grave is pretty close to my own family's grave and obviously we'll be regular visitors to our own grave, you know. Of course, yes, yes. And uh, well, uh, my wife used to always uh, stop at the gra airport grave and she'd say a prayer and she's obviously, uh, I wonder, does any uh, family member ever visit here, you know. Mm -hmm. So in 2007, we, f we saw a photograph left on the headstone and it was of the um, stewardess, Bernadine Feller, who, who Bernadine. died in the past. Yeah. So we knew then, of course, obviously it was a relative. So I took the photograph home and I photocopied it and I scanned it and I laminated it and I left it back up. And so the following year was 2008. We decided we asked Father Tom Hogan would he do a service to mark the 60th anniversary. Right. Uh, the fact that yeah, it was the 60th anniversary. Yeah, it was 2008. So he agreed through that and it was a fine turnout now from the people of Venus. We had a nice service up there and. Uh, Somehow, some of the relatives in the States got wind of it anywhere some years later. And I was in England around 2016, and actually one of the relatives had come over. He was a Jeffrey Gannon, who was a grandson of Jacob Barhead, yes. who was one of the passengers. And um, they were looking to meet us, but we were just happened to be in the UK that week. But we eventually made contact with him, and we told him we would hold the service to mark 70 years anniversary of the crash and a lot of those relatives came. Now they were kind of tied into two families, just Jacob Ferret and Bernadine Feller. But there was, there was a nice few in it, there was about 15 people there. Oh, you, 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 you met some of Bernadine's uh, relatives? A niece, yeah, a, grand, a niece or a grandniece of Bernadine. And she was the same name, she was Bernadine Feller, but she's Bernadine Feller Maguire now. Okay, because so, uh, uh, um, Bernadine, I think, was from Iowa, and uh, as, far right. as, I, 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 as far as I could research, she seemed to be a, a languages graduate, so a smart yes. lady, obviously. Yes, she, she seems she was able to speak several languages, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yakov Farhad was uh, from, from Pakistan. And um, so Jeffrey Ganem, then we, they came over for the 70th anniversary. Then, and of course, for them, it was like attending a funeral because he told us that for years after the crash, they never knew where they were buried or, you know, what was the communication. Yeah. Back then, yeah. Unbelievable. So, um, yeah. so we from 2008 on, after we had the first service, we just kept changing flowers there um, for the anniversary or for Christmas or whatever. And for the 70th anniversary, we, we put in a new flower bit at the base of the grave just to put a bit more colour because um, the fairness of the airport police, they had uh, taken out all that grass for the 25th anniversary and put in the headstone. I started putting the square of Concord there with a, a cross down the centre, which yes. was a fine job, you know. Yeah, Which, yeah. of course, it made it very easy to um, maintain then after that anyway, you know. 
yeah, I was out there uh, two days ago, uh, just doing some photography and a little bit of filming around there. So it does, it, it, it does look very well and fair yeah. use to the fire department for what they, what they, what they've been doing. Yes. Now we've we've plans now. Uh, hopefully before the end of the year that we're going to put a new face on the headstone and get the name spring on fresh now. Because after all those years, it's fairly they yeah. fairly disappeared. Now we we'll have to count to sink them all instead. So we we decided we might put a new face on the headstone altogether and put in the whole name fresh. Yeah, because it, it, it's important and, because um, as you know that that with the, with the five uh, crashes between forty six and sixty one yes. outside in China. The Pan American one is the only one where actually uh, victims are, are, are buried in, in this country. Everybody else were, were repatriated. Ah, uh, yes. Now, yeah. of course, the big issue for the Empress of the Skies crash was the last of them couldn't be identified. You yes, know? yes. But, well, I think it was one or two repatriated home, all right. Which is, there was, um, there was, uh, yeah. there was an, an Indian industrialist and uh, they found a uh, passport. Uh, in what was ever left of his jacket and it was an yes. American so they're the only two that were uh, repatriated back home yes yes so it was tough it must have been very tough for all their family back then of course you know absolutely uh, absolutely I don't mean it's some gory about it but they they, they, yeah. they they kind of identified the crew uh, on the basis of, of of seeing the effects of their their badges being uh, worked onto yeah. the torso it's have, just yeah, shocking yeah Talking stuff really. Um, so, so Flan, um, what can I say to you? But uh, you're 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 a mighty man in your endeavours to keep that going outside in Ennis, and and uh, uh, even though you've plans for it, it, it does look very well. It's very distinctive, and it's uh, it is fantastic for the uh, the, the relatives yeah, to know that there's yeah. a place that 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 uh, the deceased are, are remembered and and looked after. Yeah. You know. I suppose it just goes back to what Bella and my wife said to me the first day. She said, I'd hate to think she said, we have a relative buried somewhere at the other side of the world. Yeah. And no one not even saying a prayer, you know, that kind of way. Yeah, and yeah, that's, that's a good point. point. Yes, that's a very know. good point. Yes, yeah. So it was just on that basis we decided, look, it was only a handful of flowers and we'll, we'll, we'll put them down. And uh, actually, when, they, when Jeffrey came over to me in 1970, they actually wanted to reimburse us and we refused. <laughs> But what they did instead was they opened up a small account in the credit journal and they put money into them and they said any more spending on the grave has to come from this account now, you know. Yeah, yeah, so they they just said they sound, they sound like excellent people. Lovely people, lovely yeah, people. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, Flan, as, you know. as you know, I'm um, I'm getting towards the end, hopefully, of uh, assembling um, um, uh, and editing a uh, video uh, on the Pan Am mm. event. And uh, yes. if you'd be so good, I, I'll obviously send you the link uh, when it's done. If you can make sure the link uh, get, uh, heads out to the uh, the, the relatives, and it would be course. good for them to see that uh, and yes. to get the reaction as well. I will, of course. I, I, I leave me uh, on to Jeffrey the weekend now because we want to discuss the plans for the headstone with him. Yeah, so you just might mention this that it's that it's well, yeah. yeah that this project is is is, is getting close to the. Uh, the yeah. end line. So, Flan, uh, listen, once again, uh, thanks ever so much for uh, thanks, making Peter. me so welcome yesterday. You're a fantastic group outside. <laughs> okay, Flan, Peter. thanks Take very much. Care, Have a good day now. Thank you. Yeah, bye you bye. Too. That'll wrap it up. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Flan. It's all done. All recorded. Lovely. Cheers, you're, Peter. <laughs> you're a gentleman. <laughs> thanks yeah, very yeah. much. Not at all, Peter. A little bit. Keep, keep, keep. Keep the faith, we'll be in touch. 100%. 100%. <laughs> Have a nice weekend. Okay. I know, sir, people. All the best oh, now. I know. Cheers. Bye, Flan. One of the objectives that we've tried to maintain throughout the documentaries is to identify the exact site of the crash in each case. With Pan American, the aircraft was on an ILS approach to runway 23. Runway 23 still exists but is no longer in use. The exact wording of the accident report was that the impact came 2,380 feet short of runway 23 and almost exactly on center line. If you extend this line on a map beyond runway 23, it's obvious that the aircraft came down in a townland known as Cahar Teague. Further reports point out that the exact site of the crash was on a hillock 
known as Moylan's Crag. And while I can't be 100% certain, the photograph here, I believe, represents the exact crash site at Boylan's Crag. What indeed happened that fateful night in April 1948? Much of the accident report points to the faulty rheostat issue, which no doubt presented a very stressful situation to Captain Jekyll on that second landing attempt. Other research I have uncovered points towards a possibility of a faulty instrument landing system at Shannon, but then again, other research points to it not being an issue and that it was tested and found to be in perfect working order in the following days. The sole survivor of the Empress of the Skies was a Lockheed employee, Mark Worst. Mark emerged from a crack in the fuselage with relatively minor injuries. It must have been an extraordinary situation for his wife to see a silhouette emerging from the flames and for her to discover that against all odds it was in fact her husband. In the days following the accident Mark made preparations to leave Shannon forever and return to his native California. In 1983 Mark Worst passed away. 1948 is indeed a very long time ago. Put in perspective, these events happened a mere three years after the end of World War II. I believe that people continue on as long as we remember them. This indeed is the story of Pan American Flight 110, Empress of the Skies. We will not forget.